So in this project, we're gonna create a button ripple effect. Basically, we'll be able to have buttons and just give it a specific class of ripple. And when we do that, if we click on those buttons, we'll get this effect. And it's not just a ripple effect in the center, it's wherever we click on the button. And we're gonna obviously add the animation, the styling with CSS, but we need JavaScript to be able to pinpoint where exactly we're clicking so that we can change some of the CSS values of the, the positioning to give it that effect in that exact position. All right, so that's what we'll be doing. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get started with our button ripple effect. So the idea is we wanna have a button and then when we click on it, we're gonna basically have our JavaScript create a specific span that will have a class of circle and we're gonna style that to basically be like a, a round white circle with an animation so it scales up and we want to set the the position of it so the top and left position we want to set to where we click so we don't want it to just always ripple in the center we want it to ripple wherever we click so we're going to have to do that within uh you know with a combination of css and javascript so let's call this button ripple effect and all we're going to have here is a button we'll say click me and then for now, I'm gonna hard code the span in here just so that we can style it. But ultimately, like I said, this will come from JavaScript. So this will have a class of circle. And then I'm gonna just put some inline style in here for the position of it. So for this, we'll just say top, we'll say 27 pixel semicolon. And then from the left, we'll do like 82 pixels. Okay, so we just have our button and that's all we need for the HTML. Very, very simple. The style sheet is is pretty easy as well. I'm going to add a background. Oops, I'm going to add a background color of black. And then let's see, that's, that's fine for the body. We can leave those styles and then button. Let's style that. I'm going to give it a background color of purple. And let's give it a color of white. Okay, and then for the border, we'll do one pixel purple solid. And then for the font size, let's set that to 14 pixels and we'll make it uppercase. So text, not text uppercase, text transform, we're gonna set to uppercase. And let's set the letter spacing set that to two pixels, not 20 pixels, two pixels, spread it apart just a little bit. And then for padding on the button, let's do, uh, we'll do 20 pixels top and bottom, 30 pixels left and right. And then let's set the overflow to hidden so that nothing comes out of the button. And then just margin uh, 10 pixels on the top and bottom. So obviously you could use this, uh, you know, you could use this in, in any of your websites or applications. So now let's do the circle that we just hard coded inside. So we'll say button dot circle. And we want to position this to be absolute. And remember we have uh, in here, we have the inline styles of top and left. This is going to just be basically random, not random, but based on where we click. And we're going to do that through the JavaScript but we're just setting it hard coded for now. So position absolute, let's give it a background color of white. And of course you could change some of these values to make it look a little different. We'll give it a width of 100 pixels and also a height of 100 pixels. And the reason that it's up there right now is because I positioned it absolute, but I forgot to position the button relative. So right now it's being positioned absolute in the browser window instead of the button. So let's just add here position. Uh, we want to do position relative. So now it's going to be relative to the button. So basically that's, this is put wherever we, you know, wherever we put this here. If I, if I say top zero, that's going to move it up. So it's just a random position. And then let's see, we want to we want it to be a circle. So we'll set the border radius to 50%. And then let's on the on the X and Y axis, 
So translate, I'm sorry, transform. Translate, we want to position this to be basically in the middle of where we put that point. So to do that, let's do negative 50% and negative 50% on the X and Y axis. Okay, so now we can see where it's positioned. Uh, let's see what else do we want to do here. That's pretty much it for the styling. Um, oh, one thing I want to do is take that focus uh, or take that outline off the focus of the button. So button when it's in its focus state, set the outline to none. All right now this we want this to have an animation where it scales up and disappears. So let's start this off with a scale. So I'm, I'm adding another transform value. We already have translate, but we can add more than one transform value. I want to start this off with a scale of zero, and then we're going to have an animation called scale, and it will last 0.5 seconds for the duration, and we'll use ease out. Okay, now the animation, we need to create that. So let's say keyframes. And we called it scale. And we're just going to use a two here because we want it to go from its original scale of zero. And we want to change the trend. Actually, I'm just going to copy this and paste that in. And we want it to scale up to three. And you can see when I save with live server, you can see the animation. Now that that's, you know, it just takes up the entire thing. We also want it to disappear within that time. So we'll set the opacity to zero. So now you can see as it scales up, it just disappears. Okay, or it has that it has that fading out effect, really. So that's pretty much it for uh, for the CSS. In the next video, we're going to make it so that when we click, we want to target where we click and then have that effect come from you know wherever we click all right so we're going to start on our javascript but there's just a couple things i want to do here in the html one i want to put a class on the button because i don't want to automatically add the ripple to all buttons so we'll just add a class of ripple here and then we can get rid of the span because we're going to be you know adding that um, through the javascript and we'll leave the styling for the button here. But if we want it to have the ripple effect, then we'll add that class of ripple. So let's say const buttons and we're going to use document dot query selector all because we want to be able to do this on multiple buttons as long as they have the class of ripple. OK, and then we'll take those buttons and let's add a for each here and we'll say for each button. Let's take that button and let's add an event listener on them and it's going to listen for a click and when we click we're going to run a function pass in our event attribute here our event object and the first we want to get a couple different values the first is going to be where we click in the viewport but it's only going to fire off if we click the button because that's where this event listener is so i'm going to call this value x and set it to that event object and then client x and then i'm going to do the same for client client y put that into a y value and then just so you understand what we're getting here let's console log x and y so i mean if i click out here nothing happens because the the event listener is on the button but if i click like up in the top here you'll notice it's not like you know, two, three or something like that, because it's not getting where we click in the button. It's getting where we click in the entire viewport. So this is saying it's 160, 160 pixels over from the left because this is the X. And then 199 is, you know, where we click down from the top because that's the Y axis. So now that we have that, there's another thing that I want to get, which is the position of the uh, the button itself. Where does it start? on the X, where does it start on the Y? So to get that, let's create a variable called button top and we'll set that to E dot target, which is always the, the element that you, that the event fires off of, in this case, the button. And then there's a, a property called offset top. 
which is going to give us where it starts at the top. We also want to get where it starts from the left. So offset left, we'll set that to button left. So now just to show you what that gives us, let's say button top and button left. And if I click it, it's always going to be the same no matter where I click, because what it's getting is the position of the button itself, not where we click. Now we want to calculate where in the button we click. Like if I click up, up in the corner, it should be something like one one. Right. So the way that we can do that, let's say cons, we'll call this X inside because it's the posi position inside the button. And then we take the X value, which is the in you know the where we click in the entire viewport and then we just subtract from that the the top the button top the offset from the element itself so button top and then we'll do the same for let's say button left this is going to be the y value and this is going to be y inside and then we'll console log here x inside and y inside. So now if I click over in the corner here, it should be some very low number. Actually, that's not right. Why is it negative? Um, oh, I got these. I had did these wrong. This should be button left. Yeah, because this is the X axis and then this should be button top. All right. So now if I click over in the corner, we get like four, three, five, three. So it's getting from where the button starts over. That's going to be the X inside. And then from where it starts on the top down is going to be the Y inside. So we'll get rid of that. And then we want to create a circle element. So the span that we <coughs> excuse me, the span we had in here before, we want to construct that from within our JavaScript. So let's say document create element and we want to create a span. We want to add class to it. So let's take our circle and say class list dot add. And we want to add the class of circle and then those positions. Remember, we had the top and left in the inline style. Well, we want to get that from these values, right? Where we're, wherever we're clicking. So let's take the circle and style and we can set any CSS property we want here. We want to set the top value to whatever Y inside is because Y is the you know the Y axis. But we want to just add on to that PX because we need to. That's the format in CSS. It'll be you know 10 pixels, whatever, whatever it has to be PX. And I'm just going to copy that down and let's change this to X inside and change this to the left value. And then down here, let's use the this keyword pertaining to this this element and we want to append child. So we're putting in the circle element. All right. So if I save that and I click, um, oh, you know what? Since I use this, this isn't going to work with an arrow function. This has to be a regular formatted function. So let's just get rid of the arrow here like that. And then if I click now, you can see that the circle is is basically just showing up wherever I click. Now we do have one issue here that you can't really see from here. But if I go down, look at all these circles. So every time I click, it does add the circle, but it doesn't just remove it from the DOM. Um, that's the thing with vanilla JavaScript is you have to handle everything. If you put something into the DOM, you have to handle handle taking it out. Stuff like that is a lot easier for using something like React because you get a bunch of tools to do uh, to deal with the DOM. So what we're going to have to do here is remove it from the DOM after. But we just want to wait a certain amount of time. So we're going to use set timeout, which takes in a function. And what I want to do here is take the circle. So the current the circle that we just appended into the DOM, we want to remove it. So I'm going to call circle dot remove. All right. And then this takes set timeout takes a second argument of the time we want to wait, which is going to be 500 milliseconds. So now when I click, you can see right down here, the arrow will show when the when the circle is put in and then it's automatically taken out a half a second later.
Okay, so you want to make sure that when you're using vanilla JavaScript and you're you're adding stuff to the DOM, you want to make sure that you you clean up afterwards. You don't want just a you know a shitload of circles in the in the button. All right, so that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a very simple thing to just have a ripple, but if you're pretty new to JavaScript, this should help you out. You know, finding out where you're clicking, finding out the position of a specific element. adding an element manipulating the style so there's quite a bit in just this tiny little project if you're just learning javascript or you don't know much about the dom in general all right so that's it let's go ahead and start on our next project